SwiftUI gives each of our views access to a shared pool of information known as the environment. And we already used it when dismissing sheets. If you recall, it meant creating a property like this at environment, backslash dot presentation mode, var presentation mode. Then, when we were ready, we could dismiss the sheet like this. On tap gesture, self dot presentation mode dot wrap value dot dismiss. This approach allows SwiftUI to make sure the correct state is updated when the view is dismissed. If we attached an at state property to present the sheet, for example, it'd be set back to false when the sheet was dismissed. This environment is actually packed full of interesting things we can read to help make our apps work better. In this project, we're going to be using the environment to work with core data. But here I'm going to show you another important use for it, size classes. Size classes are Apple's thoroughly vague way of telling us how much space we have for our views. When I say thoroughly vague, I mean it. We only have two size classes horizontally and vertically, called compact and regular. That's it. That covers all screen sizes from the largest iPad Pro in landscape down to the smallest iPhone in portrait. That doesn't mean it's useless though. Far from it. Just that we can only reason about our UIs in the broadest terms. To demonstrate size classes in action, we could create a view that has a property to track the current size class and display it in a text view. At environment, backslash dot horizontal size class, var size class. If size class is equal to dot compact, return hstack text active size class text compact and I'll give the whole thing a large title font. Else return hstack text active size class text regular font large title. Now please try running that in a landscape 12.9 inch iPad Pro simulator so you can get the full effect. At first, you should see regular displayed because our app will be given the full screen. But if you swipe upwards gently from the bottom of the simulator screen, the dock will appear and you can drag out something like Safari into the right hand side of the iPad to enter multitasking mode. Even when our app has only half the screen, you'll still see our regular label appear. But if you drag the splitter further to the left, i.e. giving our app only a quarter or so of the available space, now it will change to compact. So at full width, we're in regular size class. And at half width, we're still in regular size class. But when we go smaller, we're finally compact. Like I said, it's broad terms. Where things get more interesting is if we want to change our layouts depending on the environment. In this situation, it would make more sense to use a V-stack rather than a H-stack when we're in compact size class. However, this is trickier than you might think. First, change the code so we either return a vStack or a hstack. I'll make this first one a vStack. When you build the code, you'll see an ominous error. Function declares an opaque return type, but the return statements in its body do not have matching underlying types. That is, the sum view return type of the body requires that one single type is returned from all parts in our code. We can't sometimes return one view and other times return something else. You might think you're going to be clever and wrap our whole condition inside another view, such as a vStack, but that doesn't work either. Instead, we need a more advanced solution called type erasure. I say advanced because conceptually it's very clever and because the implementation of it is non-trivial. But from our perspective, i.e. actually using it, type erasure is marvelously simple. First, let's look at the code. Modify your current body code like this. I'll add any view here, then close the parens after the font, and add any view here, and again, close the parens after the font. If you build the code again, you'll see it compiles cleanly, and even better, it looks great when it runs. The app now smoothly switches between a hstack and a vstack, depending on the size class. So what's changed is that we wrapped both our stacks in a new view type called any view, which is what's called a type erased wrapper. Any view conforms to the same view protocol as text, color, vstack, and more. And it also contains inside it a view of a specific type. However, 
Externally, any view doesn't expose what it contains. Swift sees our condition as returning either an any view or an any view. So it's considered the same type. This is where the name type erasure comes from. Any view effectively hides or erases the type of the views it contains. Now the logical conclusion here is to ask why we don't use any view all the time if it lets us avoid the restrictions of some view. The answer is simple, performance. When SwiftUI knows exactly what's in our view hierarchy, it can add and remove small parts trivially as needed. But when we use any view, we're actively denying SwiftUI that information. As a result, it's likely to have to do significantly more work to keep our UI updated when regular changes happen. So it's generally best to avoid any view unless you specifically need it.